Welcome to the show. Thanks for having I'm me. I'm so glad to finally have you here. And most importantly, yes. congratulations on your Grammy nomination. Thank you, thank you. That is, wow. I feel really good about that. Yeah? I feel super good you, about that. I, I know people say things, but you said about a year ago when the album came out, you're like, yo, I'm getting nominated for the Grammy and now it happened. Did you yes. will that into existence? Um, I, I knew it. Like, I, I honestly knew it. What, um, what, what, what was it about this album that, make, that made you feel like, yo, this is a Grammy nod? Man, um, we had the luxury of time. Is, which is why the album's entitled Daytona. That's my favorite watch, the Rolex Daytona. Right. And um, me and Kanye had the luxury of time. We really crafted it. We really just put our all into it. But we took our time. A lot of people have referred to you as your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Yeah, you, you, you're a lyricist. You, you, you yeah. create in a, in, a, in a really organic way. And it, it feels like, like hip hop is meant to feel. You know what I'm saying? Yes. W what's also interesting is <clears throat> you created an album that is shorter than most of the music we're used to now. Like these days, people are making albums that are like 20 tracks long and it's like an hour and a right. half and it doesn't end. And you came in and you were like, no, I'm gonna make it punchy, I'm gonna make it short, and I'm gonna make it fire. Was that a specific decision that you made to buck the trend or was, was, were you just creating what you created? Definitely to buck the trend. Um, you know, a lot of people make long albums and you know, sometimes they have a lot to say so they make long albums or they make long albums so the streaming numbers, you know, go higher and right. it makes their sales bigger. And the music may be a little cheap. So, you know, just so people knew that we weren't playing those type of games, we made a, a shorter album, seven songs, straight to the point of all killer, no filler. Oh. <laughs> the, uh... The album has been met with, I mean, just resounding reviews from everyone. You yeah. Know, every, every, everyone from, you know, <laughs> hip hop. Genuinely, it has. Like, I got the rap album of the year. Yeah, a lot <laughs> of people are saying that. A lot of people are saying that. And uh, you, your fans love you. I mean, this, this was next level. Last week, you lost your Cartier bracelet in the crowd. Yes. Right? And then one of your fans returned the bracelet to you. Yes. Such is, a great is, man. Is that a reflection of how good your music is or how lame your fans are? Which one is it? <laughs> I think he was just an honest guy. Right. I thought that was so amazing. But that's love, that he did though. That. Yeah. That's love, though, great. right? You yeah. don't expect that to happen? Like no, 50, I remember I've... when 50 was in, was it like Angola or something? Remember yeah. he went in the chain, he went in with his chain? Yeah. And then like you came, you were a gangster, <laughs> but you never cop nut, and then the chain was gone. <laughs> and that was it. The chain never came back. Right, right, right. It was right. done. Right. Uh, but you got, you got it back. Like, th there's a special connection that you share with your fans. Do you think that, uh, as an artist, you've managed to maintain that sense of being underground whilst being commercially successful? Definitely. Um, you know, I, I say that, you know, I go out and I perform in front of 2,000 people, right? And to me, those are, like, the coolest 2,000 people in the world. Like, they are, like, they, they tell me what to wear, they tell me what to buy, they tell me what's fresh. I learn everything from those guys. Um, now, I can go, you know, during festival season and we're doing 40, 50,000 people, but it's, it's something about those 2,000 right. that are just, like, really honed in and, and really... I, 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 don't, I don't call them fans. I call them family. That's amazing. It sounds like you're a fan of your fans. For sure. I like they that. They teach me everything. That's a, that's a different way to see it. Um, the album <clears throat> was powerful, not just because of the lyrics, yes. but also because of the music. Yes. But from the very beginning, it was met with controversy because the album cover was something that polarized so many people. On the album cover, you had the picture of the bathroom where Whitney Houston was found. And I mean, right. I remember when this came out, people were... No, people were... no. That's not the bathroom where she was found. That was just her home bathroom. Right, okay. Right. And so this was Whitney Houston's bathroom. Yes. And a lot of people were like, why? Why that imagery? Um, I felt like, um, you know, this image spoke to exactly what's going on on the album. It's organized chaos, it's, it's luxury, it's drugs, it's, uh, it's just chaos. Do you and feel like, do you feel like you, you, you revel in that? Is that like a world? Because you, yes. you, you know what I find interesting about you is you never strike me as somebody who doesn't seem out of control. Yeah. And yet what you rap about is everything that's happening in the world that's beyond your control. Is that, is that, is that conscious? Is that who you are? 100%. I mean, I make luxury street rap. And, um, you know... That's fascinating. Luxury street rap. Yes. <laughs> We're gonna talk about everything. We're gonna talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the Benzes in jail, too. Wow. Talk about everything. You, you actually wrote a song when Meek Mill was in prison, and that's What Would Meek Do? Yeah, man, because I wish he was on that record. 
what, 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 what were you feeling like? Like, like honestly, like you, you see somebody like Meek Mill go to prison, and you know a lot of the time people say about hip hop or, or sports or whatever, especially as a black man in America, people go, "I made it out." Right. You know, this is this is a life I get to live so that I don't get trapped in the life that was destined for me in many ways. When you saw Meek in that situation, was there a part of it that touched you where you were like, that's like close to home? Totally, because Meek is one of my favorite rappers. And he's like a rapper that I've watched. I've watched him on DVDs. I've watched him just come up as a kid. He's, he was actually popping a wheelie in one of my first videos. Like, when I first started. Right. He was just like a kid on a bike in the neighborhood. And we was like, yeah, do that wheelie. And he did it, right? <laughs> so um, so for, to watch him, watch his rise, um, see how great he is as a, as a MC, and then him going through, you know, legal troubles for popping a wheelie, actually. Right. It, it was terrible. And then, you know, now, now you see him now, and, you know, he's came out with his new album, It's Hot, and it's, it's through the roof. Everybody right. loves it. But it's like, man, he, he had to go through all of that just to get back to this point. It's amazing how it feels like <clears throat> the world that you've been as, in as Pusha T, yeah. you have been at the epicenter of hip-hop music and entertainment news over the past year. Yes. You know, you, we cannot speak about Pusha T without talking about the Drake beef. Yeah. You know, like, as soon as you sat down, the first thought I have in my head is, do I have a son that you want to tell me about, Pusha? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I, I, just, I just wondered one thing, and, and that was, like, do, do you ever feel like... Like, do you feel like rap battles are something that uh, are still... Are they still relevant in today's rap culture? Or do you think that, like, people have lost, uh, like, a sense of what they were or what they're supposed to be? Because some people go, rap battles were around when, you know, when rap was, like, about shooting people. And now rap has changed in its image, and rap is now just... A... Now it's like the battles are more about the flow and the lyrics, and people go, oh, but Pusha, you went into family. That's over the edge. But people go, but there is no edge in there, a rap there, battle. There, there is no edge in rap battles. Everybody has to stop that narrative. It's terrible. Right. They're, like, ruining the game. Um, <laughs> you know... You know, in a, in a rap battle, it's 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 it's, it's doggy dog, right? And you just go for it. And um, it's about it's not so much always about lyricism. It's about just being scathing, and 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 getting a rise, <laughs> getting a rise out of your opponent, right? Or or making them hush. You 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 did feel like it went to the next level though when you were at a concert in Canada. Yeah. And then like one of Drake's people or fans jumped onto the stage. I, I don't at know that who point, that was. I but don't at, know but who it was. At that point, do you think to yourself, all right, maybe rap beefs are not for me? <laughs> no, they're very much so for me. <laughs> right? No, Is they're that, very much so for me. Like when, when you look totally. at this, when you look at this album though, when you look at a like a, like a rap battle, what part of a rap battle informs how you make the music? Like, cause it, it's different disciplines, right? But at the same time, like, even in that clip we watched, it yeah. feels like you're battling. It's like a flow that you're going through. There's no, there's no beat that comes in yet. There's no... Nothing is broken. It's just you rhyming, just, like, going through those bars, one, one, one rhyme after another. It feels like, is that what luxury street rap is? I mean, that's, that is just the criteria for my style of rhyme. Right. It's, it's always gonna feel combative. It's always gonna feel... You're always gonna feel that angst. You're always gonna get that message. Right. Um, not everybody's like that. Why do you think people connected with the album? Why do you think it's nominated for a Grammy? Um, because this... This is the purest rap album that people have had in a long, long time. And just to be honest, I mean, this is quintessential samples from Kanye West and lyric-driven hip-hop from Pusha T. The best rapper, best producer, that's the album of the year. Period. Before I let you go... Before I let you go, uh, one of the headlines you made this year is you said, the Make America Great Again hat is this generation's Ku Klux Klan hood. But your friend... It's a powerful statement. Yeah. <clears throat> but as you said, your, your friend and collaborator, Kanye West, your business partner, he wears that hat with pride. He it's... doesn't anymore. He doesn't anymore? No. L let me ask he you stopped. this, honestly, as, as a friend, because, I mean... He we... stopped, though. Right, right. He... he stopped. No, no, no. And I, okay. I want to talk to you about this as a, as a person. Okay. Huh? Is, like... Because we, we were talking about this on the show now. You see families where people argue about this. You see friends. We don't live in a world where everyone agrees on the same thing. Oh, and I don't man. think you can cut off friends for not agreeing with you. As somebody who has your beliefs, how do you even begin those conversations with somebody who you know connects with you on so many other things? Can you imagine having those conversations while he's trying to make my album? 
Like he's like, he basically has, you know, my life in his palm and I have to tell him <laughs> that I hate something. Right. So we're like, you know, it, it, it was, you know, we always have real conversations. Though. Right, right, right. Always. And um, I think that's why me and him connect so well and I think that's why Daytona came out so well. Right. Because it, it's, it's a give and take. If I don't like something, I say it and he tries to correct it and right. so on and so forth. And when you, when you look at Kanye West now, you know, one of the things we can't escape is the fact that he is a genius who is tormented by his mental health issues. And now, now we've gotten to the point where we're realizing, oh, maybe it's not as much of a joke as people liked it to be. And he's right. come out and said, hey, I, I, I want to talk about this. I want to I wanna get something done with this. In the hip-hop community, it feels like mental health is not something anybody can speak about. Right. Do you think that's going to change? Um, I hope so. I mean, I, I've been pretty ignorant to mental health as well. Um, just being honest, just growing up in my household, you know, man, I think my parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, they went through it all. Right. So, you know, when you, uh, you know, uh, saying that somebody is crazy was just a word, you know, used loosely. Right. And, and, and mental health is something that nobody, you know, in coming up, when we were coming up, nobody just looked towards that. And um, now, in learning about it, yeah, you can, it's, it's a real, real thing. Well, I just want to say, man, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for making one of my favorite albums of the year. Congratulations you, on the Grammy nom. Thank you, thank you. So thank good you. to have you, man. Right. For real. Daytona is available now. Push your tea, everybody.